Good afternoon, my name is James Carver. I'm a member of the European Parliament in the United Kingdom for the West Midlands for the UK Independence Party. I sit in the Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy Group and I'm here with, with my friend and colleague, um, Ambassador Toga from, from the Ethiopian Embassy who is the Ethiopian Ambassador to Belgium and to the European Union. Um, Ethiopia is, of course, in the news at the moment, very much so with regards to, to what's happening at the, the state on the ground with the imposition of the state of emergency. And I very much take the view in, in, in politics that one has to engage with all sides where possible. Um, and I think it's very important, Ambassador, that, that, that we look at it from not just a European perspective today, but also it's important to, to, to get the Ethiopian perspective on, on the current situation. And, and I hope that from today we can actually help to, to put across um, your side of the story as well. I, I, th I think it's a difficult time, but, but um, I've all, all the time we've always engaged very professionally. I've always found that we can have honest and open discussions, and I think it's an important friendship that, that, that friendships do actually sort of have an open debate uh, and so we can hopefully talk through the problems facing this this important part of the world so uh, so per perhaps we could start with let, let's start in general ambassador with with uh, relations between Ethiopia and the European Union where they've been traditionally and and where they are at the moment and of course where, where we hope they're going to be going afterwards thank you James and uh, we are uh, very proud to have you as a friend of Ethiopia uh, you are right uh, we are passing through difficult and challenging times uh, in Ethiopia. I will come back to it, but uh, let me start with the EU-Ethiopia relationship. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's a relationship uh, that is old enough, uh, that is long enough for uh, almost over uh, four decades now. Uh, it is framed uh, under a Lomé Convention in 1975, and uh, we celebrated the relationship between Ethiopia and uh, uh, EU last year, uh, 40 years of partnership and uh, cooperation. Secondly, uh, this is a relationship based on uh, mutual respect, mutual benefit, uh, and mutual interest. Uh, EU is a very important partner to Ethiopia, and I believe Ethiopia is also a very important partner for uh, EU. Uh, the EU has been supporting Ethiopia's development effort. Uh, currently, we are cooperating in several uh, development projects, including uh, maintaining uh, sustainable agriculture and food security in Ethiopia. Uh, we are also working uh, with uh, EU to assist the, the development in health sector in Ethiopia, improving the health of uh, women and children. Uh, that helped us uh, that uh, we could uh, achieve uh, actually uh, some of the MEDG goals in health actually two years earlier than uh, the set date. Uh, in that regard, I think the partnership is uh, very productive, very uh, helpful. Third, uh, EU is also supporting Ethiopia in areas of infrastructure, particularly expanding road uh, and then link to energy. Uh, that is also another important, I think, uh, sector where Ethiopia has a potential, but uh, where Ethiopia is also making a very big contribution, not only to Ethiopia, but uh, to the integration uh, and the benefit of uh, uh, the region. Uh, as you know, uh, we are uh, mainly uh, developing our uh, energy sector and uh, the support we have been receiving actually uh, on infrastructure development uh, from EU has been very, very useful. The fourth area of cooperation uh, we are engaging is reforming civil service and governance. Again, the issue of civil service, the issue of human resource development, the issue of uh, uh, good governance is very critical and very important. Again, EU is working with Ethiopia on that sector. Uh, we are happy with the level of cooperation. Now, there have been uh, uh, quite a number of uh, uh, visits, high-level visits. Uh, in uh, uh, October last year, the High Representative uh, and Vice President Federica Mogroni visited Ethiopia, where we celebrated actually uh, in her presence the 40 years uh, anniversary of the EU relationship. Secondly, uh, our Foreign Minister came uh, this year in January for uh, further discussion and cooperation with uh, higher officials here. And my Prime Minister, as you know, was here in, uh, in June and uh, he participated in European Development Days. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, during his visit, we signed what we call strategic engagement between Ethiopia and the EU, where we have very uh, uh, important uh, pillars of cooperation between EU and Ethiopia that included 
uh, first and foremost, peace and security of the region. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, migration, which is an issue here in absolutely. Europe. It's it is an, issue. Absolutely. It's the, it's the, it is the primary issue at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. And then it's an issue also in Ethiopia because mm -hmm. we are uh, ascending, we are uh, receiving, we are a uh, transit country, and uh, we are also hosting uh, over 100, uh, 8,000 uh, refugees in mm -hmm. Ethiopia. So from that point of view, migration has become one pillar of our cooperation. Third, uh, fighting terrorism and the radicalization again mm -hmm. is a common challenge both yes, for Ethiopia and the EU. So we are also cooperating on that. Uh, fourthly, uh, you know, uh, we have initiated democracy in Ethiopia, respect for uh, uh, human rights, uh, freedom of press, political uh, uh, multi party politics. In that regard, uh, based on the Cotonou Partnership Agreement, we have a uh, regular uh, article dialogue. So we wanted to actually build on it and go beyond it uh, so that we not only focus on internal political mechanism in Ethiopia, but we also focus uh, on issues that are mutually of interest both to EU uh, and Ethiopia. So uh, we uh, would like to continue with our uh, uh, strategic uh, dialogue, articulate dialogue uh, in areas of democratization, in areas of uh, respect for human rights, freedom of uh, press, and then go beyond that. We want to add value to our dialogue. We add uh, dynamism to uh, our uh, <coughs> regular Article 8 dialogue. In that regard, again, uh, EU has been, uh, of course, uh, critical on some of uh, issues related to human rights. We are happy with the criticism, so long as it's constructive, mm. so long as uh, it is helpful uh, to promote the cause of uh, human rights. Sometimes we have our own differences, but I think those differences are managed in a very civilized uh, and a democratic way. Another area where we work with the uh, EU, uh, again, uh, is issue of uh, climate change. As you know, climate change is real. Uh, it affects Ethiopia, it affects uh, Africa. Uh, we have been contributed to the global warming, but we are hardest hit actually when it comes to climate change. Mm. So uh, Ethiopia has been playing a very uh, mm, critical role in leading the voice of uh, uh, actually uh, uh, Africans. Our uh, late prime minister, our current prime minister have been, I think, uh, spokesperson of uh, Africa when it comes to global climate change mm -hmm. negotiations. We are happy that uh, now uh, 175 countries have already signed uh, to, to Paris uh, Accord. Ethiopia uh, also signed the accord and uh, we are looking forward to cooperate uh, again with uh, EU on that area. So generally speaking, you can see that uh, it's a very rich uh, cooperation. Of it course. is a very, uh, uh, I think, a strong partnership. Uh, as I said, sometimes we have our own differences, but uh, the way we manage our differences again is in mm -hmm. a very civilized uh, mm -hmm. and uh, democratic way. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, I think that is where we are in terms of uh, our relationship. Secondly, based on the six pillars we have uh, agreed uh, and we have uh, signed, uh, we have a roadmap uh, for the coming uh, one year. Uh, and one is there will be a discussion and negotiation on migration. Uh, migration, of course, has several components, including the development aspect of migration, uh, and then, of course, regular. Uh, how do we manage and uh, uh, regulate irregular migration, border uh, management, uh, trafficking and uh, smuggling in human uh, beings, uh, and the, the issue of returnees, of course, uh, and. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, uh, migration, legal migration. Uh, EU would like to encourage mm -hmm. legal migration. Mm -hmm. In order uh, to discourage you know, illegal migration, you should be encouraging legal migration. So these are uh, areas where we are working currently, and an uh, inter-service uh, delegation was in Ethiopia a week ago, and uh, we had uh, a very rich discussion. We are part of the cartoon process, as you know, and uh, currently we are holding the chairmanship of both the steering committee and uh, the uh, senior officials committee of the cartoon process. Mm -hmm. We soon will host uh, both uh, meetings in Addis Ababa. Uh, secondly, uh, we thought uh, to have a Europe uh, Ethiopia Business Forum or EU Ethiopia Business Forum soon, but uh, because of the current developments, in Ethiopia, we thought that we will look for an opportune moment in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, then the issue related to dialogue will continue, uh, mm -hmm. and we are looking forward uh, uh, to that. And uh, thirdly, of course, we are expecting uh, the coordinator for anti-terrorism of uh, European Union will be visiting Ethiopia next year, early next year. 
We are hoping to get parliamentary delegation to visit Ethiopia, uh, and we are uh, also hoping to have the high-level consultation by mid-June. So those are uh, the ongoing uh, mm -hmm. cooperation, and we are very committed uh, to really implement the roadmap. And mm -hmm. the agreement, I think, as I've said, is uh, in the interest of both EU and Ethiopia. Absolutely. I, I mean, just just the way you sort of you made yourself available today to come in and talk over this issue. I think the other thing in the room, we have to discuss the, the internal issues, uh, mm -hmm. relations, obviously with Aroma. I think, and you know, we've I've always found that you know we, we've been frank and have a have a straightforward conversation. You know, you know, from the human rights element, from certain groups within the European Parliament, they will all they will understandably so that, that the concerns need need addressing. But I, I also think it's important that there needs to be um, a fair response from Ethiopia as well. So perhaps you you could you could talk talk a bit really just for the Parliament as whole and. And for those interested in 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 the region, in relations, in stability in the region, really sort of what is going on, and, and we really want to hear your take on it. Well, uh, regarding the situation um, in Ethiopia, I think uh, I agree fully with you. The issue of human rights is very important. Yeah. It's important because it is a very important political goal by itself, uh, but it has also uh, another important goal. If you are free, if your rights are respected, definitely you will uh, participate, I think, and you will lose your entire potential uh, to the development of your own country, to the development of yourself. So respecting the human rights, I think, is uh, not an issue that uh, we can really compromise. Secondly, democratization, uh, democratizing Ethiopia is also very important. You know this. Uh, very well that uh, this is a task that we have taken upon ourselves because as you know very well Ethiopia is a very diverse country uh, diverse in religion diverse in culture diverse in identity diverse in everything and history in the, yeah, history yeah. diverse also in political uh, or opinions yes. different shades of political opinion there is no one uh, monolithic thinking uh, when it comes to politics yes. uh, as to how Ethiopia would be governed uh, so the only uh, form of government, governance or government that can hold Ethiopia together with this diversity uh, is just democracy. Mm. So democracy is not a choice for us. Democracy is not an alternative that you really uh, look for uh, another alternative. This no. is the only way we mm. can really make progress, make transformation in Ethiopia. So the issue of democracy is a question of existential. existential. If we want to survive, if we want to hold together, if we want to make progress, we make sure that we have a democratic institutions, we have a democratic culture, and we have a democratic society, democratic governance. Uh, this is not a matter for choice again. Now, we have challenges, honestly speaking. Democracy is a very new phenomenon for Ethiopia. 3,000 years of history, which we are all proud, but the history of democracy in Ethiopia is a very short one only 20 years. Mm. We had this constitution only 21 years ago. So we have been focusing on fundamentals. Fundamentals in terms of creating constitution, fundamentals in terms of creating democratic institutions including parliament, political parties, civil society organization and other democratic institutions. These are key uh, and I think that is what we learn also from matured democracies like in UK. Secondly, the culture of democracy also is very important. You know, if you want really your rights to be respected, you should also be respecting the rights of Absolutely. others. That is how Absolutely. you can live together. That is how you can coexist together. You cannot impose your views. You cannot impose your religion. You cannot impose your thoughts on others. Mm. So that democratic culture is extremely important. We are working on it through education, through media. We are working on it, I think, through uh, organized civil society groups. Mm. But it's not enough. We need to do more. I think the current um, unrest, the current disturbances and protests we have seen is that if you have a strong, mature democratic culture, definitely you don't resort to violence. Uh, so there should be a legal democratic way of addressing your grievances. Mm -hmm. So we have seen that there is a gap there and we are definitely uh, trying to fill that gap. We have analyzed the situation. Mm -hmm. You are right, uh, the unrest has uh, uh, its own background. In Romania, for instance, uh, the unrest has to do with, uh, initially, with master plan, but later on, you know, you have uh, large unemployed educated youth uh, who are uh, requiring, actually, and demanding for a uh, decent job. Secondly, you have the issue of governance. 
as the economy grew uh, and then as uh, you know education and uh, social services expand definitely people demand for more there are large sector of the society who actually did not maybe about 22 million people who did not benefit satisfactory from our own program that has been delivering actually and then transformed Ethiopia. So this group of people are also demanding. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So when it comes to, you know, criticism uh, on human rights issue, uh, first and foremost, I think, James, we want you and other members of European Parliament to take the context into account. We should not really play with figures, I think. What are the essential things that Ethiopia is trying to do with respect to uh, respecting human rights in Ethiopia, with democratization process, with building democratic culture and institutions, I think. That's where we should be focusing on. Mm. Because if you focus on incidents, single uh, incidents and events, and then, of course, if you chase individual cases, I think uh, it may sound good for public relation exercise, but I think to transform the issue of human rights in Ethiopia, to fully democratize Ethiopia, I think we should focus on the fundamentals, and that is what we are right. Secondly, I think the issue of accountability, when we have abuse of human rights, I can assure you that there is no policy of the government to really abuse human rights in Ethiopia, whoever he is uh, and whatever acts he did. We have Law, rule of law and rule of law is uh, I think extremely important in democracy so it, yes violation of human rights we are not perfect but accountability should be there and that is what we are working on if you look at uh, the unrest in Romia and the Amara regional state I think the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission actually undertook an investigation which is very important in our view for a number of reasons first we established in really what went wrong and then what has happened and then whether the government has been overreacting, the law enforcement agency, whether the law enforcement agency have taken excess uh, use of uh, power. So the investigation clearly showed that there were some problems. Now, the outcome of the investigation was presented to parliament, part a resolution uh, in which we have accountability element. This is, I think, important because first, it in encourages, it strengthens internal investigation mechanism, internal accountability mechanism. It strengthens the capacity of our own institutions. So uh, that is what we are trying to do. The next round of uh, unrest, of course, uh, there is issue of uh, youth unemployment, there is issue of um, uh, good governance, there is issue related to identity questions, there is issue related to border disputes, there is issue related to uh, more demands for quality health, quality education services, and so on and so forth. The only way we can again address this is by involving mm. the public. The public should be part of the solution. Where we have delivery problems, I think, where we have accountability problems, where we have a gap, I think, in uh, accountability, we can only work with the public. Uh, and public participation, public, I think, uh, uh, involvement in addressing the whole problem uh, is extremely important. That is precisely what we are trying to do. Okay. I think also, I could, you know, some, so it, something that I think needs to be raised, of course, is the geographical context here. Precisely. Uh, you know, we, we, we're, we've talked about the Horn of Africa. Everybody's aware of the problems within the Horn of Africa. And I think we also need to look at the bigger picture, you know. Uh, a stable Ethiopia is essential for stability across the region. Obviously, Actually, you could argue, we you know, with the African Union being based in Addis as well, you mm -hmm. know, you know, actually, it, it, you know, an unstable Ethiopia, I feel, affects the whole continent, not just the Horn of Africa. Absolutely. Uh, and and I, I think people do need to look at the bigger picture. Yes, of course, there are concerns. Uh, yes, there are criticisms. And it's only right, you know, that a, that a democracy actually understands those concerns. But, but my concern and my urge for colleagues from many different political backgrounds, many different, we take up many different issues, to actually, is to look at the big picture here. Because we cannot afford to have democracy fail in Ethiopia. Absolutely. Uh, the whole on, uh, fall on from that would be, would be horrendous. We know, we know what's going on in other parts of the Middle East. We, of course, we know, we know what's going on in Syria. We know what's going on in, in, in the Horn of Africa, in other parts of Africa. Uh, and the last thing the world needs now is a destabilised Ethiopia. Uh, Absolutely. It, really, really, uh, I, I, I it, it just, just does, doesn't matter. I couldn't agree more with yeah. you. I think the context, 
the geopolitical situation, I think, uh, is extremely important, and mm. I think we should not lose sight mm. of uh, what yeah. is going on yeah. around. Yeah, but, but of course, for the critics, one, one has to say, you know, it's important those human rights are respected, and, and obviously, you know, what you're saying, Ambassador, um, I would hope, hope would go some way to, to counter those, criti those critics and the criticism that they're raising. Precisely, yeah. Uh, as I said, I think the uh, uh, geopolitical uh, uh, consideration, I think, is very mm. important. What we have been trying to focus actually is in our internal vulnerability. Yeah. This is important. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, I think the context in, in which we are democratizing, the context in which we are trying to make Ethiopia stable is extremely important. For the last 25 years, Ethiopia has been uh, uh, a very strong, stable and uh, peaceful country. It's, Ethiopia's stability is uh, extremely important, not only for Ethiopia. I agree with you that it's important for Horn of Africa, for the continent, and for Europe, mm. uh, and of course, uh, other partners. This is a huge country. It's a center of countries which are already in uh, a very serious uh, instability problem. Uh, take South Sudan, uh, a new country, uh, but uh, again, uh, passing through a very difficult uh, challenge. Uh, take Somalia, a, a country that has been without a government for uh, uh, 25 years now. Mm. Uh, and you have, uh, of course, a problem between Ethiopia and Eritrea. It is in this context that uh, we should look uh, Ethiopia's stability. Secondly, Ethiopia is making a progress, a remarkable progress in all fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if we allow Ethiopia to fail, uh, of course, it will be extremely, extremely dangerous uh, for uh, uh, for the whole I, I continent. Think, I think every Democrat would agree with that. Would Absolutely, with that. and uh, that's why, by the way, well, that's why, regardless of what is going around, I think we believe that Ethiopia's stability alone is not sufficient for us to to re remain uh, stable, peaceful. Ethiopia believed that the stability of its neighborhood is extremely important. That's why we are working with all our neighbors, including, of course, uh, members of the IGAD uh, mm -hmm. countries, that uh, we work together to resolve the problem in South Sudan. We work together to resolve the problem in uh, uh, Somalia. And that is out of our conviction. Today, we are a leading peacekeeping contributor to United Nations uh, mission, both in Africa uh, uh, and in the Horn of Africa and Africa. Uh, this is, again, out of our realization how important it is to have a stable and peaceful uh, neighborhood. To pacify the region is extremely important mm. for our own uh, uh, safety and security and stability. Mm. Secondly, the most secure stability will come from within. Uh, and that's why we are actually trying to address the issue of economy, the issue of social uh, progress, the issue of uh, democracy, the issue of good governance, the issue of development. Peace, development, democracy are our national goals, without which we cannot exactly, uh, I mean, we cannot really uh, survive as a nation. Mm. So these are the three defined goals in Ethiopia, development, peace, security, uh, and of course, good governance uh, and democracy. Uh, that's, why, that's why we are working on these three important goals uh, uh, in Ethiopia. And, and of course, to have that, you need a good economy. Absolutely. You must have a good, so perhaps let's move away from the negativity, um, not putting it to one side, but let's actually talk about the other issues. Let's talk a bit more about the economic issues, um, not just in Ethiopia, but in, in the region as well. Perhaps you could say a bit more about, about the current economic issues. Um, what, you know, what you would, like, what you would like, like to sort of be hearing a bit more coming out of the West, out of the European Union, perhaps with regards to trade, um, other areas as well. Well, uh, economy is very important, I think. Uh, politics is important, but economy is also very important. Uh, I remember when uh, our uh, party, current party, uh, you know, came in uh, as a government in 1991. People in Addis uh, on the streets asked, actually, uh, we were preaching and promoting democracy, but people said, bread before democracy. Mm. So you cannot build democracy on empty no, stomach, no. Uh, on empty people stomach. People are hungry for democracy, absolutely. but they're hungry as well. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So economy is important. Yeah. That's why we have been reforming our economy. I think uh, Ethiopia has been uh, very successful uh, in uh, achieving uh, high growth uh, in rate in economy. Uh, for the last 15 years, uh, we had registered double-digit uh, growth in economy. This has benefited a significant portion of our uh, farmers, uh, people uh, in, in urban centers, uh, and 
this has also benefited the private sector, mm. and of course it benefited the international uh, uh, community by way of uh, private uh, investment, foreign mm. direct investment. Mm. Yes. We have several foreign direct investments that are coming to Ethiopia. Now, uh, foreign direct investment, uh, first and foremost, I think, it comes uh, with knowledge and uh, managerial skill. It comes with, uh, of course, foreign currency. It comes uh, with, uh, with uh, employment, generating employment opportunity. It will uh, boost our export and help us, of course, uh, in uh, increasing our foreign currency earning, which is we need uh, it very badly. So Ethiopia has been attracting foreign direct investment. We have been trading. Our trade has been expanding because the economy has been expanding. Uh, and overall, we have been investing in all sectors of the economy. The government has uh, played a very important role. The private sector has played a very important role. The private sector uh, for both foreign and uh, domestic. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are also working on tourism uh, as part of uh, our economic expansion. This is another important sector that if we promote, if we advocate and if you develop, uh, we can uh, really make uh, good use of uh, our uh, uh, cultural heritage mm -hmm. in Ethiopia. So we have been uh, investing in that. Mm -hmm. Another area where Ethiopia has made uh, a uh, very important investment is education. Uh, another area where Ethiopia also made a very significant uh, investment is health. These are very critical, both education and health. They have their positive impact on uh, economy, they have a positive impact on uh, human resource development, and of course transforming the whole society. So we have been with that major uh, contribution to our economy comes, as you know very well, from mm. infrastructure. Mm. And uh, Ethiopia has uh, uh, really, really invested hugely, uh, massively in infrastructure development because we knew that without infrastructure we cannot develop our economy. Mm. So we have expanded roads, we have expanded uh, energy, we have expanded uh, dam construction, we have extended railways from north uh, to south, from east to west, and uh, we also introduced uh, several uh, grand uh, projects like Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Uh, the need for energy actually because of the economy expanding both in rural and urban areas is uh, growing by 30% annually. To meet that demand, uh, actually, we have to uh, use, make use of uh, our own uh, resources. Mm. Secondly, we are trying to integrate economically with our regions, with our neighbors. Uh, we are championing, actually, to integrate the region in infrastructure, in economy, and we are doing this with all our neighbors. With Djibouti, uh, we are uh, uh, actually transmitting power to Djibouti. We are uh, also uh, sending water to Djibouti. Uh, we are doing the same, I think, uh, with uh, our, all our neighbors, particularly in terms of connecting our regions with energy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is extremely important. If you are integrated in the economy, definitely it will contribute to peace and the stability of, of the region. Yeah. Uh, so uh, these are the things that we are doing uh, uh, now. Secondly, uh, we are hoping, despite the fact that we had a, a very significant uh, uh, you know, uh, drought in Ethiopia that affected about 18 course, million people, course, yeah. me, had, region, had, yeah. exactly, had it been the previous Ethiopia or Ethiopia 15 years ago, we would have not managed mm. that huge uh, mm. uh, crisis actually by ourselves, but we managed mm. with some assistance from our partners, you know, that huge. We created a system. And at the same time, of course, we managed actually to feed our own people. Mm. Uh, this clearly shows how Ethiopia has become resilient, actually, mm. to even manage some of, uh, you know, some yeah, uh, such a very... Mm. One only needs to think of the, of the terrible famine in the past, absolutely, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, in, in our lifetime, yeah. Precisely. So these are the things that uh, we are doing. Uh, regionally, I think uh, several countries, including Kenya, are doing very well. Uh, I know some of the economies are uh, uh, in a very difficult situation, but overall, I think the East Africa region is doing very well, including Ethiopia. Uh, will the economy be affected? Uh, the current assessment by IMF is that uh, it will have some, some, some uh, impact on our growth, but uh, definitely, again, it will be one of the uh, uh, highest uh, economic growth. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, we would like to manage uh, the current situation in a very, uh, in a very uh, short period, mm. period of time, mm. so that it does not have uh, a very serious uh, impact on the progress we are making. Mm. So regional cooperation is important, but uh, in order to ensure uh, the economic growth in the region, and then of course integration in the region, 
peace and security of the region is extremely important. It is, and it, I think it goes back, and I think you might have touched it earlier on, on when we first sat down. You touched very much on how uh, education is really coming along. And it, I, I was on Horn of Africa last, not only last week, and again, the same, the same thing was being said. A well-educated youth mustn't be frustrated it mustn't be radicalised, and I think with, you know, with the progress in the economy, certainly in, in Ethiopia, we have to have that job creation to actually, one, stop, 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 stop the migration and actually keep, keep communities together, three, stopping radicalisation and actually helping develop Ethiopia further. Precisely. You know, uh, we have expanded education tremendously, yes. remarkably. Mm. Access to education has been, facility to education has been ex can expanded never uh, like it happened in the past. Uh, and then, of course, we have expanded um, um, universities, and then we have sizable graduates, which is a success by itself. But mm. on the other hand, of course, initially, when we were actually uh, uh, having our curriculum for uh, higher education, we were focusing on uh, the market, uh, mm. and then, of course, our development needs. So what kind of human resource, definitely our economy, our democratization process will require, will need. So our university interns actually is based on 70% science technology uh, and engineering and 30% social sciences and, and they're humanities. And the, they're the skills you want. That, that are, is the skills we need. That is the skills, we, we, is the skills we need for transforming the economy, yeah, uh, for uh, transforming, I think, uh, the whole sector, I think, uh, social, both of economic sectors. That's why we have been focusing on that. And I, it uh, is resulting, but uh, one missing link we are finding out now is that while we were planning for, uh, planning for that, actually, we also planned to link it with industry, with manufacturing, with actually the market need. Mm. And there has been a gap in effectively implementing that link, I think. Mm. That's why we are seeing, you know, youth being frustrated, youth protesting on the street, mm. youth showing uh, some uh, sign of violence, uh, and then, of course, the issue of radicalization. Mm. Essentially, it, is, it has to do with frustration. It has to do, I think, with uh, lack of opportunities. As much as we have created opportunities for thousands, uh, tens of thousands People of will always be left behind. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the international community would do well. Actually, it's a lesson for any developing country. You know, of course, um, uh, the international community encouraging anywhere in the world, encouraged um, edu you know, better education development. But of course, with that, with that uh, qualification of a better education for those youngsters, there, there, is, there is a wider international responsibility to actually ensure that those youngsters are given the opportunities Precisely. and not radicalised and not disenfranchised. I think that's why uh, we know when uh, we were discussing with EU on uh, uh, our strategic engagement, I think we are focusing on uh, what we call industrial development parks. These parks will create uh, significant jobs. Uh, and as the Prime Minister has presented this plan, you know, it will help us uh, creating jobs for our use, but at the same time also it can help us uh, minimize uh, refugee flow from uh, Africa to, 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 to Europe. So uh, we are uh, working with EU so that the EU institutions, including the European Investment Bank, contribute to uh, development of industrial mm. parks in Ethiopia. We are glad that uh, the president of the European Investment Bank met our prime minister in New York and then he committed 200 million uh, USD uh, to contribute to the Industrial Development Bank. I think these are uh, some of the things that uh, we are working very creatively with uh, European Union institutions and the international community has a responsibility. I agree with you. Mm. First and foremost, of course, the responsibility is ours. But on the other hand, this problem is not really entirely to a given country. It is a, a global phenomenon. Now. It's a global uh, problem. It's a global challenge. And, and, and the way the world is, the world is actually, if you look across the globe, the world is it, developing in areas and at speeds that it hasn't done for, for many, many years, probably since the end of the Second World War now. Um, and completely new markets are opening up, you know, as the world has become more smaller, as the world has become Absolutely. more globalised. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was astonished by the by the, the quality of our mobile phone telecommunications in Horn of Africa last week, you know, and uh, you know, the quality and, and how well connected everybody is. I, mm -hmm. I think that, that was the thing that surprised me the most. Precisely, uh, yeah. precisely, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we, we, are, we have uh, state-of-the-art technology, actually, and facility when it comes to mm -hmm. telecommunication, and uh, we are happy. We are uh, again modernizing, uh, and then of course access has, uh, 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 like in any other sector, access has uh, increased uh, okay. and uh, 
the growth has uh, doubled in a very short period of time. No, we are focusing on quality and, of course, uh, and new technologies. Uh, and uh, uh, that's, I think, uh, uh, an investment towards uh, uh, government's attention. And uh, we are doing uh, extremely well, I think, in those areas. Good. Well, I mean, look, I, as you know, I know and I, of course, I'd, I would never you know, put you on the spot, but, but I'm a long-term supporter of recognition for Somaliland. I was in the Horn of Africa last week. Yeah. Perhaps you could you could you could talk a bit about um, the Ethiopian context on the possible Dubai Port World deal on Hargeisa. Um, strategically, I see Hargeisa as a very very important opportunity and possibility for Ethiopia. Um, and as 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 Somaliland continues continues to develop, I was just really wondering what what, what your thoughts were on on a possible well, Dubai uh, Port World deal. Well, well I don't, uh, frankly speaking, have the official position, but mm. uh, I can just give you my own view. That, that would be my own view is that. Uh, I know that uh, the Dubai Port Wall has signed an agreement with the Somaliland government to uh, maintain and uh, expand uh, Barbara Port. Now, this is an agreement of the, between the two. And uh, essentially, I don't see any problem or any objection to that. Uh, the agreement has been signed and the parliament has approved or ratified the agreement. Somaliland parliament has... Uh, that is the information I have. Yes, now, that's right. what, what will be Ethiopia's view on this? You know, uh, since we lost access to sea uh, after uh, independence of Eritrea, we heavily depend on ports uh, from uh, our neighboring countries, and mainly so far on uh, Djibouti, uh, port of Djibouti. Mm -hmm. So uh, we said that we should get port services from all our neighbors. Competition is a good thing, isn't it? Well, competition okay. is one thing, but mm. on the other hand, you know, Ethiopia is a very big country. Yes, yeah. So, uh, you know, to really uh, ship a good, and uh, from Djibouti to northern part of Ethiopia to yeah. southern part of Ethiopia yeah. is very expensive. Mm. So in order to minimize, you know, uh, such costs, unnecessary delays, so we are uh, uh, working uh, on port facilities with all our neighboring countries. To northern part of Ethiopia, for instance, we um, are making use of uh, Port Sudan. Mm. We are working with Kenya for southern part of mm. Ethiopia. And then, of course, uh, who knows, uh, mm. at the end of the day, if uh, uh, you know, a miracle happens and then if our relationship with Eritrea normalizes, we might be looking for a uh, uh, possibility to, uh, again, use the port of Asr. But the issue or, or the development of uh, Port Barbara is a welcome idea for Ethiopia. Uh, I think it, I we, think have been, we have been actually trying to even solicit and mobilize support for the uh, yeah. development of the yeah. port. The fact that now Dubai uh, Port Wall has uh, taken that, uh, I think, uh, task upon itself uh, for us is a good. Mm. After all, I mean, um, Emirates and Ethiopia uh, also have a very good relationship. Uh, so uh, it would be in the interest of, I think, uh, both uh, Somaliland and yeah. Ethiopia. And Ethiopia will be the main beneficiary yeah. of that of port. Yeah. And, and, and it will be good actually for, for you know, wider development within, within Somaliland. You know, I was on the on the um, Hargeza Berber Road the other day, you know, the highway that would eventually link up, link up um, through yeah, to Ethiopia. Actually, yeah. And that, that can only help, that can only be better, better for the wider absolutely. area. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. absolutely. Your Excellency, um, Ambassador Tony, yeah. thank you. Thank you for, uh, for all this you. opportunity no, and, and thank you for your friendship. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Okay. okay. okay.